Okay. Let's make sure everything here is set up now. <clears throat> Shows them live. Stream health looks good. Data rate is good. It's public. Oh man. There's people rolling in now. Why is live chat? Refresh chat. Alright, the chat in Streamlabs is not working. What's going on guys? I'm trying to get Streamlabs chat here working, which it's not. I'll do that. I'll do that. I don't want to do that. Sorry, give me one second here guys, because I'm trying to just... Ah, stupid Streamlabs. Let's see, is that still working? Video output low. I dip down a little bit. That's not working at all. All right, do you guys still have me? Let's close out of that window. With everything I don't need on here. Oh, there we go. Now the chat is rolling in on Streamlabs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now Chrome is frozen. I don't know if you guys can still hear me or not. Yeah, the beard, the beard went. That was a uh, November thing. I did the mustache for a couple days, like the last week of November. I went with the mustache only, and uh, it was pretty hilarious. It was pretty bad, but then clean shaved, and now it's letting it come back. It'll get back there. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think everything's coming in okay now. Except Chrome's completely crashed on me. Alright, also good. Alright, so while this is still running and good, we're going to go ahead and get started. So. On Cyber Monday, Monoprice had a super lightning deal on open box 3D printers. They had the Monoprice Select, no, they had the Monoprice i3, which is the black one. That's not the Select Mini, it's non-heated bed for 80 bucks. And they had the Monoprice Mini Delta for 80 bucks open box. You kind of don't know what you're going to get. I did open it because I wanted to make sure I actually had a power supply. Because if I didn't have a power supply, this whole string would be useless. We do have that, so I've closed everything back up, and we're going to get that uh, experience here. This is a non-retail box, I'll tell you that, because the printer's kind of floating in there. It's not a really great pack job because it was open box. I'm guessing this one might not have had a retail box come back with it, maybe. You'll see in just a minute there. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Sound is cutting out. Hmm. Hang on a second. It could be, um, hang on one second, let me. Right. Is that any better on the audio if that's cutting out a little bit? I'm now just straight into my laptop. Let me know about that and then I'll continue here. You might need to bump down your resolution. I'm trying to do this at 1080p, but you might need to bump down to 720. 
but the replay at least will be 1080, so that'll be helpful. <sighs> do, 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 do. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Goodbye. Mm, goodbye. Maybe so good. Mm. Well, we're just gonna go with it. I don't. I don't really know how I'm gonna be able to fix this. If internet decides it's gonna crap out, it's gonna do it, and I'm gonna do me. So, let's get into the select the Mono Price MP Mini Delta. Uh, here at the top, uh, if you have ever ordered a Monoprice 3D printer, they do give you this extended warranty program. I do not know what this applies to on their open box things, but I do know they have, um, uh, it's a one year warranty, and then it's two total years protection on your 3D printer within three months purchase date, if you do all that stuff. I do know some people had some good uh, things with their um uh, warranty program. People have gotten things returned uh, back pretty good. Uh, to do so now. This is where it gets kind of interesting. So I'll show you here. This is the the closed like foam that fits inside of a normal retail box for this printer. But you can see there's a whole lot of space here. It jiggles around quite a bit. So they just went ahead and used these air packs. Air Plus to try and fill it in as best they could, but definitely not ideal, and I'm really hoping it didn't get damaged at all. And we're going to go this way. So, yeah, it was just like five or six of those AirPods to kind of fill in some of the gaps, but definitely was not anything good. Do -do -do. Alright, so we do have the power cable, we have the spool holder, which is metal, and then we have the power supply, and there's some other things in here as well, so we have a power supply, we have this absolutely useless uh, print removal tool, uh, we have the USB cable, which is micro USB, a set of Allen wrenches, and uh, we have the... Uh, micro SD card, which is the same as the Select Mini and the regular MP Mini, is unbranded. So there's that. Here's the foam. It looks all right so far. It's got a nice little handle on the top of it right there. And closed with the bubble wrap. There goes that. And then we have another piece in here so another piece of foam to hold the arm and then there's some more air plus shoved into it there for that and that's pretty much it right there so let me switch to this one here so you guys can see it's super duper tiny very small printer and they do have a little superman print already on there it's on the raft so that was printed on here. Everything seems to be in okay condition. Doesn't feel loose at all. Let's go ahead and move you guys down to here so you can get a better look at it. Go like that. So everyone's on 40. All right, well, we'll go with that. Uh, so, yeah, it's got a, a removable build plate here. So you can pull these tabs. And this comes out. As you can see there, it does have a very, very small heater right on the bottom there. And it does have uh, self-bed leveling in here as well as it's supposed to. It's what I've read. And it will go ahead and touch all those points. Put that back on there. Here we have just a very small effector. It is, a, it is the same uh, proprietary kind of one-off uh, hot end that they use on the Select Mini V1 and on the actually the MP Mini has a 
uh, like E3D style on it, but the Select Mini V1 has this exact same uh, hot end that that one has. It's plastic here, up top as well. It does have some reinforcement of aluminum in there. So you do have a little screen here with three buttons. Bottom has a fan port, looks like a 50 millimeter fan in there. MP, mini delta, voltage 12 volt, power. Right here on the side, we've got power button, micro SD slot, micro USB slot, power. Uh, nothing over here. We do have some of that on here. It's little fuzzies. Here's our extruder. So they're using it's the same. You know, actually, it's a little beefier. Uh, the plastic extruder. It actually does pretty good. I've noticed for other things, but it goes through kind of to show you up in here the routing of where it goes so it starts here goes around and then it goes into and down to the effector here so it's kind of a long way to get down there in my opinion uh, there are some slots right here on the back for the little spool holder that they got going there so there it is and that just feeds right up into where are we at the extruder right there so, yeah, I mean, this thing weighs not much. <laughs> I can say that. And, like I said, this little thing is pretty useless. Yeah. Useless. Buy one of these instead. <laughs> Look at that. It came right off. So, here's the print. Oh, I got the... Of course, the lighting is a little crazy on it right now. I guess my leg's a little high. Either way, let's try to peel this raft off. Definitely crashed into the bed at one point. As I can see, there's a little dip in their build surface there. Man, this is... Tough raft to get off. Not really great. Most of it came off. It's a little bit left on there. There's the rest of it off. So, oh, trash it just goes in the box. Yeah, so there's their little Superman deal. Oh, come on. I don't know why the heck the white on this is such... Uh, to do... See if I can adjust this camera real quick. Hang on, guys. Where am I gonna go to? Editor. Yeah, the white is. Wow, I didn't realize the camera was so white. I'm sorry for that. Big video. Um, Come on. It's, why is it so freaking goofy? It's supposed to be automatic here. Come on now. Mm. Let's just turn that down. You bought that. Turn this back down. Come on. Should you do? You follow all that? I don't know. Stupid thing. This is really, really bugging me now. We will figure out a way to make this so it's a little more easy to see. If we go like that. I don't know. Anyways, it's okay print. It's pretty fine details in there though. A little stringy. So let's see, what else do we got here? I guess we can try and plug it in. Um, it is only a two prong, which is not fantastic, but it is using a external inverter, external power supply. Do do. I hope this thing actually even works. 
<laughs> I have no idea. And there's no guide whatsoever, so we're just going to kind of fly by the seat of our pants and see how it goes. Oh, I need power. That in. Uh, where's the power at? I got a cable here somewhere. <clears throat> there we are. Unplug that printer. Okay. Ouch. My right, boots up. Not not touch screen. Mm. Sad face. Um, but I wonder if I can get it so you guys can actually see that screen somehow. Oh, that fan's a little loud. But there is no way for you guys to get an angle on that screen. Because why is the camera so blown out? What in good gravy is going on here? Yeah, I do need some kind of black batch. I don't know, but it's it's yeah, it's so blown out right now. I don't have I have a shirt from a different video I'm using right now. Does that help at all? That helps it just. Oh, well. Let's see here. You can kind of get the angle there. I just, I don't know why I won't see that. Meh. Either way, it says print, uh, preheat, and move. That didn't work, so that's a waste. Uh, I want to do want to scoot this up a little bit. Use a maker box here for something useful. That way, you guys will see the print once we start getting this thing printing. Maybe, hopefully. Uh, let's see. So if I get the micro SD card, we throw this in there. See if anything's even on it. Goes in upside down. So. Print. There we go. It's got a bunch of different things. Butterfly Delta, Superman Delta. So we can probably try their Superman one. Uh, I do need some PLA. I do have a wee spool here. Some stuff left. There's a wee spool. This should do. Just feed it in here. That was easy enough. But let's go back and uh, we'll preheat. Up to 205. Get the bed up to 60. And kind of see how long this is going to take. Yeah, it doesn't matter the angle I put on there. Pierre, how you doing? Turn the exposure. I did try to turn. There's no option for that. Exposure's all the way down. Is it neg 11? Try this now. That didn't change anything. I have it all the way down. Turn that all the way down. I don't know if I have the tool installed on here. What is this? This is a Logitech. Nope, I don't have a Logitech tool installed. Hmm, 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 hmm. Oh well. So we're already at, it went all the way up to 215. Coming back down now. Let's see if we can. 
push our filament through, so our filament's coming through. Get out of here. Just the stuff that was in there before came out pretty easily too. And down in there. Alright, so it's kind of bouncing around the nozzle. It's not really staying too straight there. While I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna open up Simfy 3D and see if I can find a profile for this. Maybe be able to slice something real quick. Yeah, I mean, this is like an insanely compact machine here. I kind of let's go here, let's go move, and it's home. Okay, what well, home's just fine. That's good to see. Back you up a little bit here. Do 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 do. Alright, so we gotta see if somebody's got a profile already in there. So, configuration assistant. The M's. Model price, 3D printer, mega set. Mini Delta, there we go. Next, finish. And we're going to go ahead and import my coin. That'll be our test thing here. I just have to find it, though. There it is. There that is. So kind of take a look at the settings here. Uh, so your traction of 5 millimeter. Turn us down to a point one five millimeter layer height. Two perimeters inside out. Five millimeter there. Our linear spine. Uh, we're not going to do support. Heated bed sixty. We're going to go to two hundred on that. Uh, let's see. We're going at. Does all the bed leveling. 8 millimeters a second. Wow. We'll see how the default does there. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really expecting anything like mind blowing out of this, but. 80 bucks. Couldn't really pass it up. If I can do small stuff with this, that's pretty uh, good. All right, so we're preheated. We're going to go print. Now we're just going to make sure it actually can do what it's supposed to do. We're just going to do the butterfly delta. I'm just going to get the nozzle up to 210. But in the meantime, I'm going to see how this goes. Look at that. There's the auto bed leveling. Tweezers here. I do, you probably should clean the bed. It's gonna do a raft, I bet. Yep. That's actually a pretty solid first layer. Hmm. Yeah, 
back down. You see this? Yeah, it's definitely not the quietest machine out there. I'm sure some stepper dampers would help out. Um, you now the, mo the motors are housed down in the bottom. There's nothing really up top except for the extruder motor, which is a pancake motor. It's very small. So, you know, double, double check all these bolts. Everything does seem to have survived transit, even though it was not a again, retail packaging. Oh, where are we at here? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna let this go just a couple minutes, see how it ends up going there, and then I'm gonna switch to. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and slice my coin in Simplify 3D using the profile that is default in there, and see how that goes. Well, Chris, I wouldn't go out and buy it yet. Let me at least see how this thing is and how it does. Uh, there is, uh, so in the top here, while this is going, I'll tell you guys a little bit about it. I hope you can hear me over it. It's not that loud, but loud enough. Um, so it has some Allen heads up in here, some threaded rods, which go into the belt tensioners for the X, Y, and Z towers for each of those belts. And they all feel pretty good. This one front right feels a little bit looser than the other two. Just a smidge, though. And I'm using, like, the world's crummiest PLA right now. It is the default. It's the sample stuff that came with the HE3D K280. So this is definitely not Primo PLA whatsoever. It might switch to something a little bit better if this doesn't do so hot. But we will see how it goes. All right, we're doing the final, looks like one of the final layers for that raft there. I mean, it's, I'm actually a little bit impressed with how enclosed they have it. This is a fairly safe machine because also they have quite a lot of insulation on that heater block as well, which isn't too bad. Now, the cooling on this is, again, they're using one... A uh, 30 millimeter fan, which is blowing directly onto a very large heat sink for the hot end, and it also has a nozzle at the bottom, which is pushing part of the air down onto your nozzle where your print is being, where the you know plastic is being extruded. It's not the most effective thing, but in a configuration this small, I don't really see what else you can really do. There could be some mods out there to add something. But, I mean, this thing is absolutely tiny. Uh, so you switch to glass. Yeah, glass. You probably can get a little piece of glass. Oh, getting it round cut. Did you get it cut by somebody or did you cut it yourself? Because I don't even think I could cut a round piece of glass very easily. I do have a glass cutter, as I had to cut some glass for the, uh, what's that, the Fogitech 2020i3, excuse me. Ugh. It's getting 10.30 here, so a little tired now. Alright, so Brandon, I'm going to go into the Simplify 3D profile here. And it is saying it's on uh, P2. So I'll change that to 5. See how that does a little better. Nate, what's up?
Yeah, again, this was a open box deal on Monoprice websites directly for eighty dollars. Um, normally, I think their open boxes go for well, the printer itself only goes for one fifty. Very, I mean, this is an insanely inexpensive printer. Where the Monoprice Select Mini goes for two hundred, the Mini Pro goes for three hundred, I think, and they have a Delta Pro, which I think also goes for right around three hundred bucks. I'm not sure why the audio is so bad for you. I'm not sure at all. Let me actually. Uh, well, that's not really. Let's see here. I think it's just because my connection is such crumb right now. Like, it is just garbage. Close that. Do 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 do. Not sure at all. Me actually. Uh, well, that's not really. I think it's just. I'm, I think my volume is just a little loud. I can dial down the gain a little bit. Cancel so settings on that. Nope. Uh, where's the filters? Turn the gain down to four. And I'll adjust this one too while we're waiting for that thing to print. Filters. That's already that's already pretty low. I don't know why both these cameras are just being god awful right now. Yeah, I think my gain is just a little too high right now for some reason. Again, I'm not sure why it's so high. Go with that. Uh, we're doing another layer here on the raft. It's not thing I don't like rafts. They just take freaking forever. No, I thought the Mini Pro was like 300. First War was more than that. Mini Pro 3D. Is, oh yeah, it is. It's, it's on sale for 192 right now on Amazon. It's originally 250. Okay, that is cheaper than I thought it was gonna be. I didn't realize Delta Pro was so much. I mean, the Select Mini, it went, I mean, printed beautifully for me for at least a year, and then I started having the bed problems, and then I just started upgrading the hell out of it, because why not? Uh, the i3 Mini, I haven't touched at all. Uh, I'll show you here. So the Select Mini is right there. The regular i3 is right there, and that prints PLA like an absolute champ. I do quite a lot of review filaments on that printer with when PLA samples coming from MakerBox or MondoBox, they go right onto that printer because I have a profile already put in there from PLA. I just hit print and it goes and zero problems with that whatsoever. So I really do enjoy that one. Yeah, again, it's just, I think my connection is just not fantastic today again. Come on. I don't see this thing zip. I can't believe the Simplify 3D profile default is 80 millimeters a second. That's that's pretty quick. Um do 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 Let's go back here to the live.
Oh, what's going on, Frank? Hey, where'd my drink go? Here it is. Ugh. Now, my hopes for this printer is like, meh. Not really sure. I mean, it does come built out of the box with a sample print on it that it supposedly printed. So that's a lot going for it for, um, I mean, even at the full price of 160 bucks, as Brandon said there, I mean, you most of the kits, I guess we're kind of away from the kit now. Like when I first started 3D printing, like full kits is all you could really buy for under $500. Now, you know, you're getting things like the A10, the i3 Mega, the Ender 3 for under 200 bucks, and it's in like two or three pieces, slap it together, and you're off to the races. I mean, this literally is pull it out of the box, plug the power in, and print. Add filament, sorry. Yeah, there are two videos on the Select Mini upgrades, part one and part two. Part one was done like a year ago. And then I moved, and it just it just got kind of sidetracked. I moved, got here, and then decided, you know what, I'm going to put the time into it. And it is printing quite well, I might say. Uh, I have to clean up the cables a little bit on it. It's a little bit messy there. But after I reprinted the parts in PLA, because the PETG was just too soft, once I printed PLA, uh, I was able to get everything to stay a lot better. And I did have to modify the parts a little bit to make it work on the hot end, uh, at least to what I liked. But the biggest change I did on that, uh, aside from a couple um, kind of just necessary, it's easier to print flexible on there now with the better extruder. Um, there's a little bit less wobble in it now with the uh, Z-Ax, Z-Gantry, with the X-Gantry stabilizer on there now with a 6 millimeter rod. Now we're cooking around on the actual model. And, uh, but yeah, adding the V6 on there, I have V6 clone on there. I did have some problems with some crummy throats, but once I finally got through that, now it's just, I mean, I print PLA mainly on that machine. I can print PETG if I want to, but it's mainly just a good PLA uh, machine. I mainly do PETG on the Anycubic i3 Mega, the A10, or the Hypercube, just because those have the um, Ultra Base style uh, well, two of them have the actual ultra base, and then the super plates on the A10. It's just going to town on top of this raft. It's crazy because it's such a such small thing. Like you can't really really like get in there to actually show anything, but it's too hard to actually see. That Superman go. I mean, Superman actually had quite an awesome base to it over the raft. It's pretty surprising. And the details in it are pretty good. Hard to just see on this, like, clearish white. It's like milky, clear filament. You're hard to see the details in it. Uh, can you manually speed it up? Yeah, so there is, if you hit the button here, and I can set it, yeah, I can set it, race speed is set at 1.0. Right now, for some reason, my camera is being goofy, so you can't really see the screen. The contrast is just garbage right now, or exposure, whatever it is, I don't know, this little stupid webcam is just not working out well. But yeah, you can make it faster. But it's going pretty quick right now. So, Ron, you bought this at the full kit price, huh? I mean, like I said, that's, that's actually moving around pretty quick for a little machine like this. There's very little vibration. You definitely can hear the motors. That's the squeaking from the motors spinning and going along. And that's just the uh, the vibration through. But if I pick it up, 
it's basically just resonating through the plastic on it, but having it down on something. Uh, I am reducing some of the noise because I have it here on top of a box, so that is helping reduce the noise a little bit. Hey, Mr. Purr. I think the FT6 is a monstrous beast of a machine. I think it looks gorgeous. I love the, the new way that John has implemented the ACM in some of the corner brackets. I think that is a, a pretty slick design. Uh, he's doing a bunch of his own custom PCBs in that now, which is pretty sweet as well to kind of get everything a little easier for the a newer person to use. It's huge, though. I mean, I'd have to see print quality off of it to see if it's actually worth. But, I mean, it's, what, 600 on the Y, 300 on the... X or it's 600 on the X, 300 on the Y, and three or 400 tall. I mean, it looks like a giant fish tank to be honest. If you throw some uh, acrylic on it, I'd love to get one, but honestly, I literally have nowhere to put it. I, I don't even know where I would do with it. I'd have to get rid of my filament under my desk and put it under the floating desk over there now, just because I literally have nowhere to put it. It's a huge machine. I barely have enough space for the FT5 as it is. I would want to see, so I know Riley got his, uh, I don't know if he's still in the chat, and then he has a friend that got one, but there are only two that I've seen so far uh, get it. I'm sure some people jumped on it on Black Friday, because it was $100 off, so instead of being $600, it was 500 bucks. I'm sure somebody jumped on top of that. Well, it's halfway done, it looks like. So you can do PETG with this. I mean, I guess if you use glue stick on the bed, you probably could get PETG to work. But I mean, this has, has like a, it's a little peltier looking uh, heater on. Like it's, it's a two by two inch heater that's heating up this print bed. And... I mean the whole. It's actually. I mean it's actually hot to the touch. It's pretty doggone hot. I guess because it's a thin piece of, alu uh, of aluminum there, it's able to push all that heat with such a little heater to all the space. So that's uh, not too bad. <laughs> it went haywire. Yeah. I don't have any sunglasses. I only have my prescription ones downstairs. I'm not going to grab those. But, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't, really, I don't know if I want to speed this up anymore. <laughs> I don't want to screw it up. Especially on the first print. Like, I want to see if you bought this machine and you threw it on the bench and you put in the SD card and you set print on this, on this one card, on this one uh, print file... What are the results going to be? So that's why I kind of want to see with this. And then I'm going to throw my own file on there using Simplify 3D uh, defaults for this machine and see how that goes. We're about halfway done now. It is hot. My goodness. And it's also interesting that it does have like this the warning sticker here. So keep hands clear. You can't even see that because it's a stupid contrast. But it says keep hands clear of moving parts. Do not touch hot nozzle. None of the other machines, I guess, mm, that really doesn't have it. It just tells you to insert the SD card. And the Mini has, Select Mini has nothing on her as like a, as a warnings. I do wonder, like, what was wrong with this machine to cause it to be returned and resold as an open box machine? Maybe it was nothing. Maybe the maybe the reason why I received it in that box is because the original carton got destroyed, and then they couldn't sell it as a brand new product, so they went ahead and put it in this box and sold it as open box. The world may never know. But I do know a lot of people that jumped on these printers 
when they on the uh, Cyber Monday deal. Uh, I think uh, Tim at TH3 bought three or four of them. A couple other people in the um, TH3D group had bought several of them at, at uh, for their little print farms. Power to them. I know it works, but again, I don't want to do anything crazy here. So let me finish uh, checking out my my file here in Simplify 3D. So it's going to be my coin at 100% scale, so a very small maker coin. Not going to do any support on it. Shouldn't really need any. See how it ends up going. What's the ending script look like? Does it home at the end? Scripts, ending scripts. I'm going to add it. G28. On the hot end. Check with the thing again here. And yeah, when it's done, it'll home. Yeah, I want that to get completely out of the way. Still dropping frames. Sorry about that. Looks like we're in the about 75% range now. We'll probably start top layers after this layer now, probably. If I was a guessing man, which I am a guessing man. Oh, three mil acrylic in the slots that are in here. I do see that. Yeah, cause right here. There are slots. So I guess you have to take off these front panels here and slide that in there. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Kind of make make a little door for the front. That would be too. That'd be a fun little thing to do. But again, why? Unless I was going to do ABS on this. I mean, do you print ABS with yours, Ron? I don't know how ABS would stick to their little build mat there. I mean, it's grippy. I'll give it that. All right, now we're doing top layers. Mine it doesn't smell at all. Nope. Again, Ron, you bought yours new, so that could be something to do with it. I mean, who knows how long someone might have had this or what was, you know, I have no idea what the deal with this machine actually was prior to coming to me inside the goofy box. <laughs> oh, I need to get a uh, micro SD card adapter. Do I have one nearby or do I have to go to my desk, which is over there? Oh, there's one in the... Take the one out of the... After Mega. This is almost done, and then I can finally try my own print here.
in the final percentage now. Come on, little one. All right. So there it is. It finished in 27 minutes is what it says there. And you can do one more or you can go home. We'll go home. Pull that off. The bottom layer is absolute garbage. Let's see if this will actually focus. Yeah, see that bottom layer is pretty garbage on top of that raft. Top layer is pretty nice though. Can't complain about that. Uh, all right, so let's pull this out, get my sliced file onto this micro SD card here. Save. Save that. Export it successfully. Uh. Alright, so we're going to print and we're going to tell it to print the Fugatec 3D printing coin. And it does do simultaneous heating, it looks like. So it is heating the bed and nozzle at the same time. Nope, it's doing the bed it's doing the bed first. I'm gonna go ahead and set the nozzle though. Just to let it start heating up there. And the the nozzle is a little bit dirty. Let's get uh, see if I can reach took the extension off my microphone, so now I'm kind of tethered to the laptop here. Uh. I mean, the, the default speed is 80 in Simplify 3D, so that's what I'm going to go with. can always turn it down, it's not a problem, but... Just a little bit of gunk on the nozzle here. But it fell right off with a little bit of a brass brush there. <laughs> yeah. It came off real nicely. Uh, I wonder if I should hit it with a little bit of... Nah, I'd be alright. Alright, here we go on my coin now. Night, Ron. Thanks for hanging out for a little bit. Why is it sending the filament out? Oh, it's sending all the filament out. What in the world is going on here? Still going out. Why? Hmm. Guess I can kind of remove all of this. I think this is kind of having a problem with it. We're going to cancel that print because I don't know what in the great googly it was doing. But it did not like that starting script from Simplify 3D. 
So we will redo that real quick. Put it in here. Okay, pair to print. Save it out. Successful. My coin. All right, and let it reheat back up. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, I did not like that starting script from Simplify 3D for some reason. I mean, pretty much any printer can do a vase mode print. Um, it all depends on the overhangs of said vase mode model. Because some of the internal overhangs can be pretty significant. Okay, now we're now we're cooking. Grab that off real quick. So I did change this to do a five by five mesh bed leveling. Default in Simplify 3D was two. And this is using Simplify 3D's profile, which I am not sure if I like their default settings. Wait and see how this first layer goes down. Maybe I'll make some changes. It's really hard to tell though right now. Oh, got my knee. The coin is also really small, so it's kind of hard to tell. But from what I can see, it's doing all right so far. I don't think I'll be able to zoom you guys in enough to be able to see it. Yeah, it's too. Uh, it's just too doggone small. The the effector plate is actually rather large on this. Seems like it could be a little bit smaller, but it is giving a little bit more rigidity in that. Do you think if you printed full speed at the lowest layer height, then it would turn out the same as you were printing slower at the same layer heights? Um, no. You will almost, almost always get better prints at a slower speed. Almost. It has to do a lot with how well tuned your printer is, or how well tuned it comes from the factory. Uh, jerk and acceleration plays a huge part in that because slowing down the acceleration of going from, you know, zero to 90 millimeters a second versus zero to 40 millimeters a second is very, very different uh, because it's not going to accelerate as fast because it's only its max speed is only a certain level. It, it's hard to tell, but it, it, you're pretty much always going to get better results at a slower speed. So this is um, during vase mode. I mean, the only thing you're going to see in vase mode at a faster speed that will probably be more pronounced than a slower speed is going to be any ghosting. But if you have your printer tuned, it really shouldn't matter. And as long you will, though, um, printing at faster speeds raise your temperature up. 
Uh, I guess I'm, I'm doing this at 200 at 80 millimeters a second. And it's kind of just kind of flying through. What's the estimated time on this? Estimated time is 25 minutes on this little simple coin. So this is printing. So I'm printing this at a... Um, let's see. I'm doing a 0.1 millimeter layer height. And it had uh, three bottoms, five top, two outer layers. Uh, it's a 20% infill rectilinear. I've already got all the three islands conjoining together, though, so that's interesting. Now the I can definitely tell that it is um, needs to rotate because if X is right in front of me, it's printing at 90 degrees. So I wonder if I can change that in the slicer. I rotated 270 would be straight then. So have to remember that for this then. See you, Steve. Uh, Chris, I purposed one because I don't need an army of these. I only wanted one because I wanted to see how it was. I wonder when it first came out, what, a year and a half ago? Almost two years ago now, I guess, it came out. Um, maybe a year and a half ago, I guess, something like that. I wanted one way back then, but it just couldn't justify the cost for it. But I thought for this, hmm. I mean, I literally bought it just so I could test it out. I have no need for it. I just wanted to try it out. And maybe be able to uh, inform people whether or not they should actually invest into an open box one or into a full price one at double the cost. Because like I said, this was $80 versus a full price brand new one is $160. Someone needs a portable printer? I mean, I guess. The only thing, it has a handle, and it has an external power supply. That's it. Um, it has the auto bed leveling. There's not a whole lot of moving parts. I mean, Delta has a fair bit of moving parts, but you know what I mean? is like you don't have to worry about a gantry kind of skewing itself because it's pretty solid. I mean, Thomas, I can't really give many recommendations on this because this is literally the second print that came off of it. This first print, walls are decent, top layer's good, but it was on the raft, and that just turned out pretty bad. The second layer kind of corrected itself, but that first layer on the draft was not very good. But now I'm using no raft, so I can kind of see how it is straight off the plate. It is a little heated bed, which is very cool to see. It is a tiny build volume, though. I think the slicer set to 77 on the X and Y. I have the the anti-cubic castle up there. Um, I love that machine. It took me a week <laughs> to get it dialed in because I didn't really fully understand a lot about the Delta. But once I got it dialed in, man, that gives me some wicked fast, awesome prints. It really, really does. I do have a heated bed for it. That's going to be a future upgrade. Uh, I might do a video on that, on adding a heated bed to that. But aside from that, I really enjoy that machine. That's a nice Delta couple mods I put into it but um, they they did they did some pretty good stuff the way they built that they made some right decisions 
I mean, now this is my fourth Delta that I've owned. This is the first pre-built one I've received because the Anycubic, the K280, the Triangle Labs D-Force Mini were all full kit printers. They came in thousand parts, how to put them together. This one I literally pulled out of the box, plugged it in, and started printing. Very big difference. That's why I want to try a CME CNC because people rave about CME CNC Delta printers. And I really, really, really want to try one out. Frank, I'm always feeding the addiction, dude. It's bad. We'll be downsizing here when I go to leave this place. And I don't even know if I'm going to keep this one. I mean, I might just go ahead and just resell it for, you know, 80 bucks or 50 bucks, whatever. I don't know. If I can end up finding a use for it. I don't know if my coin will fit at 200% on here. If my coin fits at 200% on here, this could be another PLA uh, test print machine. It looks like it will. But I can try that at a later date. I just want to see now how it does with this one. I, mean, I could have made this print a lot faster, but I said 25 minutes at 0.15 millimeter layer height. So I figured I had to give it the, the try. All right. Uh, yeah, Chris, this is a just a cheapo PLA that came with the HE3D K280 as a sample filament. That's why I'm using it. It's super cheap. This printer did not come with any sample filament, not even a little baggy. I don't know if you get one when it's new. I know the other printers I got when they bought them brand new out of the box, they came with a small sample bit of filament, but this came with nothing. Again, it was an open box purchase. Is that Willie Wiley? What's up? I mean, so they're using dual six millimeter rods, it looks like, uh, with the short bearings. Injection molded, uh, carriage, very simple. Wait, is that an IR? I need a flashlight. Well, I have a flashlight on my phone, Shane. Oh yeah, these are these are IR. Uh, End stops. They're not buttons. That's interesting. So they're infrared end stops. They are still using plastic bearings on the idlers. They are toothed though, so it is you know getting a nice grip on that. Uh, they seem to be lubed pretty well. Shooter motor is warm to the touch. I don't know what board this is using. I wonder if it's using the same uh, select mini board. Because also the i3 mini is using that same board as well. You know, there's an emote. <laughs> um. I mean, Chris, you can always wait for them to go into open box sale again. They're going to do it again. Can't see why they would. It might be cheaper next time. Man. The retractions are pretty quick, too. Let's see if I can see on this extruder here. There's no flat part on that. Doggone it. I need to... I have a bunch of wheels. 
but uh, they need to be drilled out for the extruders that don't have the flat uh, on them. I like using these wheels, it makes it easier to feed the filament in. But I need to drill this out, or I guess carve it out here while I'm waiting for this to finish. Uh, this is a Bowden. Uh, the uh, extruder is um, here on the back side, and it runs the Bowden tube down into the proprietary hot end. Very few deltas are direct drive, just because that puts so much weight on that effector and really can affect print quality. Or they're using the the floating drive, which is like it floats above the extruder. It's still technically Bowden, but it's as close to direct as you can get. But there's very few direct drive deltas out there. Most printers nowadays, honestly, are Bowden setups, and I don't know why. That's why I was drawn so hardcore to the Mark III, because it's direct drive. I really don't like Bowden printers, and I don't know why people think that they're this greatest thing ever right now. They're really not. They're pretty garbage. It makes it so much harder to print with a lot of material, especially flexibles. Yeah, you can do the little flexi mods to extruders and kind of make it a little bit better, but they're still not as good as a good old direct drive. Yeah, because even with a pancake, excuse me, um, And my Ender 3 is somewhere in the process of coming to me. I don't freaking know. They shipped it a while ago. It went to my old address. So I'm hoping that my old address, people there, turn it around and send it here to me. I am just waiting for that to arrive. But I've wanted that for a while because I want to compare that to the A10 because they're pretty close. But I've, had, I've put a lot of work in the A10 now. And uh, it's going to be hard to kind of compare them because of how much work I put into that and how much long I've had that for months to print with now. So I'm hoping to get the Ender 3 soon. Do 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 about halfway now. Which is pretty accurate. I mean I guess it's been about 12, 15 minutes since we started this. It doesn't have Anything on display to show what is uh, just has a prog prog progress bar. Blah. I just wish this dog on camera would not be so screwy. Any cubic formax? I asked any cubic to send me a formax. They said no. <laughs> I was like, you jerks. I really wanted one. Yeah, that didn't work. Go back to that. Did I just screw up that camera? Son of a gun. Ugh. Oh, maybe I... Oh, wait, hold up. I think I just fixed it. Let's go to configure the video.
Hey, look at that. Figured it out. <laughs> now you can finally sort of kind of read that. There you go. So now you can see how it has the uh, this big bar here. This is the progress bar that goes across. Set your nozzle, set your bed, set your speed. All right, so now that camera looks a little bit better now. I'll do this though. Ah, come on. Oh, you can't read it if it's like that there. That's all right. You don't need to be able to read that. You want to see the print. Although that autofocus is pretty needs to stop. Let's turn oh, autofocus is off then. All right. Yeah, I mean, all the any cubic printers now have the ultra base on them, uh, except for the Delta. But I think the Delta Linear Plus or Linear Plus Pro. I think that was supposed to come with it. I'm not sure if it actually is now or not. It didn't come with it back when they sent me just the Poldy version, which is the most basic one. It was like a $150 or $160 printer. Pretty cheap. But a fair bit of work to get it together and, and configured. For me it was at least. Do, 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 do. Say 80 millimeters a second. This thing is cooking along at 0.15 millimeter layer height. Yeah, I was able to kind of reset the camera finally. Um, Ronnie, the 1.0 is 1.0 the speed that was set in the slicer. So I set the speed at 80 millimeters a second in the slicer. That's what it was set in Simplify 3D. Um, so it's just 1.0 times that speed. So double the speed would be 160 millimeters a second, obviously. Uh, is the bill volume 120? That says 140, wasn't it? Um, look it up on their website real quick. Alright, so... Full specs. Build volume is 110 by 120. Yes, yeah, so 110 round and 120 high. Let's see. Layer resolution is 50 microns at the highest, so 0.05. That's unlikely. Uh, print speed of 0 to 150 millimeters a second. Travel speed of 0 to 350 millimeters a second. To do power consumption is 221 watts. Average noise 49 dBA. That's actually not too bad. Since the weight is 30 pounds, this thing is not weighed 30 pounds. Maybe in the box. Yeah, I mean you can nuke it up to. 2.0, it's 200% of the print speed. Again, that's 160 millimeters a second. I think pretty much if this was going anything over 100, it might start to struggle. 
but if you put your temperature high enough, it might not. I mean, like I said, there is a fair bit of insulation around that hot end, so or on the heater block. So most of that heat is going into that nozzle, which is being used to melt that plastic. So it could be very effective. And that's why it's able to go at this speed at only 200 uh, centigrade. Because even with a silicone heater sock on the, well, I guess that one, I'm, I'm up to like, that one's set to 75 on the K280, but it's just, it moves too much. The AnyCubic Costal, I can do that one at like 80 to 90 millimeters a second, and it just cooks. But I have to put, uh, sometimes it has a little problem melting the plastic, so I need to put some uh, Teflon tape, or the, um, the tape and uh, some, uh, some kind of shielding on that V5 clone that they have on there. I don't know why they like using that V5 clone so much. They probably just bought a butt ton of them back when the V5 was big, and they're still going through the stock. But yeah, I need to insulate the hot end on that machine. All right, 85% done now. And I'm getting beat night. I might have to call it a early night after I do this. I was going to do some other printing after this, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'm all out, I'm all out of some go juice. Man. I mean, this would even fit on one of my little shelves here, to be honest. That'd be kind of funny. The, the model prices do. Which is not with this spool of filament on them. I guess probably's got about a three or four minutes left, five at most. Particular brand of PLA that for my everyday printing. Well, uh, I use quite a lot of Ziltec PLA. Lately, I've been using a lot of Rhino Reel PLA because they sent me a bunch of that. I really do like that one. But what I've bought with my own money so far has been the most of has been uh, Ziltec PLA. That's I've bought the most with them. It was Hatchbox for a while for my personal projects, but uh, yeah, lately it's been the Zotec. Which I have a coupon for in the video description. If you want to use that, buy roll 15% off, try it out, see if you like it. I've printed their EBS, I've printed their PLA, I've printed their PDG, and I've printed their Flexible. And their Flexible um, is extremely hy uh, hydroscopic. So I had to dry that for quite a while before I got good prints out of it. I mean, I got good prints out of the box, but then it just, uh, it rains here so much, it just soaked up all that water. So I had to really dry it out to get that working again. But once I dried it out, I made a dry box for it. It's been going great. Hatchbox is pretty much everybody's like, first filament I would say most people buy a roll hatchbox in the beginning it's not a bad price 
Uh, at, at 20 bucks a roll or $25 a roll, depending on what you're getting. For PLA, I think they're what, so 20, 24, somewhere around there. Um, but there's a lot of other filaments you can get for cheap. Like Rhino Reel, yes, you got to print your own spool for it. But it, uh, I mean, it's $13 a spool for 750 kilogram. Um, the Zillatech, I think you can get it down to right around 15 with the coupon or 14 with the coupon. That's not too bad. All right, it finished. Well, it says it took zero minutes. Wah, wah, wah. All right, now let's take a look at the quality of this. It's stuck on there good. A little bit of stringing on it. That could be too high of a temperature. It could be too much fan. Well, the fan doesn't really matter. Uh, it could be just a little bit more retraction, a little faster movements here. So see how well we can see this. So here is a 100% of my coin at a 0.15 millimeter layer height. So it did a pretty good job. Bottom layers are not the best. Right here is probably the best. This one was a little goofy. This one here was, you know, 60% okay. But overall, that ends up being a pretty good print from an $80 printer. Like I said, you can see the little bit of wisps in there. So I could be just turn my, my heating down maybe like 195 maybe. Try it out with this PLA and see how it is. But it's really nice and smooth. Again, that, that, uh, that 0.15 millimeter layer height is not too shabby. And this is a totally untuned Simplify 3D profile. This is just what I downloaded off in their configuration assistant to make this. So a little bit of tuning, I might be able to get this to print some pretty decent things. So just ask, is it worth the uh, 160, 170 retail? Um, I don't know. I'll do some more prints on it, let you know. It's a, again, it's a very, very little machine. So you're not getting huge prints off of this. But if you only need to do, like if you're going to do like maybe D&D &D minis or something like that and you want to start painting and airbrushing, this might be all you need. I mean, why spend the money on a freaking CR-10 for $300 when you can get this for, you know, under $200? You know, and again, there's zero assembly required. Literally, it's plug it in, put filament in, and start printing. There is no assembly required with this. Auto bed leveling. How many printers come with auto bed leveling? I think it's an interesting little machine. I do wish it was touchscreen though. But that's okay. That'll be alright. So, yeah. Alright, well, I'm going to just call that there. Again, this was a very interesting little build. And, uh... I don't know what that button does. It goes green if I click it. That button right there. I thought that was the power button. Apparently it's not. So the only way to power this thing down is to unplug it. I don't know. Um, anyways, yeah, this is just kind of the first look at this machine. I wanted to see uh, what it was like. I wanted to see what the quality was off of just a quick print to see how it came out. Something that came off the slicer or what was pre-sliced on the SD card and then something that I sliced in Simplify 3D using the stock profile in there. Pretty good results. So yeah, all right, well thanks for tuning in guys. And what are you doing now? Oh, it's print, oh that he tells it to print another one? Oh, I think that's like a replicate button or something. Oh no, I hit, I hit print again, shoot. Yeah, we cancel that. I, instead of hitting home, I told it to go ahead and start printing another one. <laughs> I don't want you to do that. All right, yeah. You stop now. Um, anyways, yeah. So I bought this simply because I wanted to test it out. I figured why not at 80 bucks, it was well worth the investment. If you guys want to, you know, kind of help pay for projects like this, buy me a coffee, do some super chat, or become a patron, even better. 
and kind of help out make the channel a little bit better and I can do more things like this. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you all in the next one.